Hi everyone, welcome back to this course. So in today's video, finally, we'll start working on mutation and uh, what mutation means when it comes to tensor query. So we did use query before, which was for fetching an API. Okay, so you just go an API to get data from the back end. Okay, the mutation basically all what it does is it help you with doing the CRUD operation. And if you don't know what is CRUD, CRUD means create, update, and delete functionalities, okay? So it's not you're fetching, but you're doing some work with those uh, data, okay? So you can't use use query for that. You have to use something called use mutation. That's the only difference. And use mutation follow the same way of doing with use query, okay? Just little bit things here and there. Now, let's start with that. And I will import my use mutation, okay? From 10 create query. Then I will come inside my uh, functional component. So I will create my mutation, like before we created our uh, query, okay? So const, it will give me back an object. I will call it for now, mutation, okay? Mutation, and you can call this anything you want as well. It just will be an object. And then I will call use mutation. Okay, and you use mutation same as use query except an object as a parameter. Okay, and we call something called mutation fm. It's same for use query, did query fm for use mutation, use mutation fm. And inside here, you can do whatever function you want to do. So I'll just copy and paste my API call that will do the update for me. Okay, so all I'm doing, I'm just fetching this API, I'm doing a post because I'm creating a new item, so it's a post that I'm passing the title and body, okay? So I'm just following the documentation of this API, how to do it, okay? So here in the guide, that's how I should do when I'm creating a new source, okay? And basically that's it, and that's my mutations created. So now I create my mutation, how I can use it. It's very easy, so the way we will do it is I will just go inside my handle submit because that's when I wanted to trigger and update um, or create my item. So I'll just go right here on our same mutation and you can access something called dot mutate. Okay, so basically that will just trigger my API call to really do whatever updates I want behind the scene. So let's do it like this like this and we can also pass parameters for example let's say this is coming from somewhere else not from our state so we can just do for example like this an object i have first title and then i have body okay which means title will have a body as a title from here and body will have a value as body from here and if i want to keep the same names this is a short way of writing your object and i can ask those details pass those details there or click send um new post and then I can just say here new posts dot title and new post dot body. Okay, this is good. Now let's clear off everything. And if this again we can so nothing. Okay, great. Me title, me description, summit. Okay. And you can see here I'm sending uh, things and I'm getting a response back as well. Okay. And let's check our dev tool and before we're using queries now we can go to mutations and you can see here we have some mutation going on okay we need to pass a mutation key so it's saying there is nothing no mutation key found but it is successful okay we got uh two items uh, passed as a variables um and you get all the details back here okay which is uh, really really cool now let's say for example you added a new item okay um in your back end and you want this re list refetch again okay and so it can display your new item that you added in your web page lucky for us use query handle that by itself for us all what we have to do is just a um, couple of lanes of code and it will handle everything for us okay remember we created Square client here okay and we said it will be uh, like a context thing and to be available to all our application and we'll be using it. Now, this is the time we'll be using this query client, okay? And it will help us to access other queries that we used before as well. And remember, we use also something about the query key is very important. Now, it will come very handy. Now, 
Here we go. And first thing, import. I will use query client. Use query client. Okay. Then I will come right there and I will create my const query client equal use query client. And basically this query client here is the same one which is in the index.js, uh, our source file. And this query client now can have access to all the queries we created within our application. Okay, so why we need this? So we need this so we can tell our mutation when you finish creating my new item, I want you to revalidate my post call that I added here, okay, to get my list. So what we'll do behind the scene is we'll go look for this query key that we'll pass to it uh, soon and it will just refresh it behind the scene. And the very cool thing it will do for us is that your screen will not be flickering or anything. No loading state, no flickers. It will just re-update everything without even you notice it, okay? So this sounds amazing how we can do that. So the use mutation, have mutation fn, and also have a few other methods as well. One of them is being on success, okay? So let's say when I mean, my update is successful behind the scene, I want to do this async and I want my function to run. And I want to say query client dot invalidate queries. Okay, so it will invalidate a query that I already used. Okay, and the query I want to revalidate is the post, okay? So you have to be careful with your spellings. Don't do my mistake. So I want the post, okay? So I'll save this. Now, let me run this and see what will happen. Now just hard refresh to so have everything from fresh. So first you can see here we have the post query, okay? Which is the first call to get my list. Now I will go and create my mutation. I'll say title me description me okay and i'll just go down and click submit when i click submit i can go to my mutation and i'll see my mutations being successful okay and what we'll do behind the scene it will just re-validate this call and you can see it's not triggering again because we're not triggered it again okay just behind the scene it will revalidate it and fetch me the latest data it is there okay so by that time you'll be able to see your item here unlucky for you i'm so sorry for this because i'm using the json placeholder um the way it works is that you can actually mock the api calls and you see them in the network but it does not give you the resource back okay because it's just a mock server it's just fake everything is fake so i can see the calls on network but i can't see my things coming back within the actual post within my new item Otherwise, if you're using on your local machine a real API, you will see by now your new item listed up there. Okay? Now, let's go back to our mutation function. Okay? So we said you have mutation fn, okay? And you have on success. You have also a few other uh, functions which are very helpful. It depends on your scenarios, but you should be aware of that. Okay? The first one, of course, will be on error very classic okay and this one will trigger when you have an error happening on your screen okay the cool thing is that these functions they can give you access to many things okay all of them like on success it can give you access to them okay that you get back on your api response to your variables okay that you pass here as uh, argument okay and also to something called, called context and you can need them for many things, I don't know, your scenarios, but just be aware that you have access to these details in your success function, okay? For the error, of course, you'll have access to the error itself, okay? To variables as well, okay? Same as on success that you pass to your mutation fn, and also you have access to the context, okay? And for example, I can just say, uh, console log the and I can say for example oh no, the post with title 
and you can say for example your variables the title fail to be created okay for example uh, can be some other reasons you want to access those things and I can also display the error okay that's one thing you can do other uh, function which is really 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 powerful for some reason uh, it's called on mutate <laughs> and this function basically why it is so powerful it just basically it runs even before the mutation fn let's say for some reason you want to intercept the call to do something before it happens you can do it right here okay so this one also is a function and also it have access to variables only okay you can't access anything else because that time nothing else happened only what you have available is your variables okay so you can again do anything you want here so i'll just say console log run first okay and for example, I can, for example, I don't know, let's you want to debug really your uh, parameters you're passing. So I'll just cancel load my variables here. Okay. Now, the other thing you have access as well to, and it's also very, very powerful, is called unsettled. Okay. And why this one is powerful? This uh, function basically runs whenever your mutation FN, whenever your mutation finishes. Either it succeeds or it errors out. It doesn't matter. But this unsettled is the last thing run in your series when your mutation is triggered. Okay, so again, also it's very powerful thing. Um, I'm really so surprised with all these functions we can get. Um, I should have known these functions much before. <laughs> it's must, it must have made my life much more easier while dealing with APIs. So unsettled basically, yeah, it's run the last thing, run last in my mutation calls okay so basically here you can do anything um either displaying a message or yeah it can be anything i don't know what now you can use it for but it is really a uh, good functionality which is available for you there please add me and me, 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 me. and let's keep our console log open so you can see run first okay that is your unmutate, as I said, that's the first thing runs, and I cancel log my variables, okay? Then we have on success, I didn't add any cancel, but that should be second, and then you have this thing running last. Let's say, for example, if you want uh, to return a promise, okay? Uh, which would resolve either on success or throw an error. So if you want to do that, it's very easy as well and very simple. Just instead of using mutate, I'll copy and paste this one, you can use something called mutate async, simple as that, okay? You can do a wait here, of course, because it's async. You can wrap it also in um, a try catch block too. So you have this possibility as well. So let me undo this. Other thing also, for example, let's say if your uh, mutation fails, okay? So by default, it doesn't retry, but you can add that function as well if you want to. Let's say if this one failed, I wanted to retry, uh, I want to retry two times, okay? So just add the number here, you just add retry, the property, and just add the numbers that you want, uh, how many times it should retry, okay, if your API fails. Also very simple, very easy, no extra work as well.